The last two weeks have been a very happy time for Queen Elizabeth II. The monarch visited the Royal Horse Show and also attended the festive show Gallop on History. On all occasions, Her Majesty was in high spirits and welcomed guests with a happy smile. In addition, the other day the Queen was cheered up by a special and very expensive gift from the President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev. In honor of the Platinum Jubilee the ruler presented Her Majesty a horse of a rare breed. It is necessary to note, that the monarch is a big fan of horses and ponies, therefore the President's gift like no other came to the taste of the monarch. In the pictures published by the palace, representatives of the Equestrian Federation show Elizabeth to a horse right on the grounds of Windsor Castle. By the way, the Queen chose a lilac cardigan and a matching skirt to meet the guests. Of course, Her Majesty thanked the President for the table's generous gift. It turned out that this horse comes from the most valuable racing breeds, the animal is distinguished by endurance and strength. By the way, a horse of this breed recently sold for $19,000 at auction. Writer Sir Michael Morpurgo once shared the Queen's secret, the monarch told him that her love of horses began in childhood. It was the first time she stroked a pony's neck, which felt like warm velvet. That's how her childhood fascination grew into a lifelong love. For many years Windsor Castle was not the main royal residence. Usually the monarch came to Windsor only on weekends, although she loved the place very much. But Buckingham Palace is still considered the official residence of the British royal family. As for Windsor Castle, it is the most favorite place of Elizabeth II, for a long time the Queen dreamed of staying here forever. And now, several years later, Her Majesty has decided to move. It is worth noting that the last time the monarch slept at Buckingham Palace in March 2020, but after the beginning of the pandemic COVID-19, the Queen and Prince Philip moved to Windsor. Experts said the couple's final years together in this lovely castle were unforgettable. They felt again what it means to be happy, the experts shared. Now that the Duke of Edinburgh is not with the Queen, Windsor Castle is one of the few places that reminds her of her beloved husband. And very soon, Elizabeth II's entire life will be centered here. Windsor is a place she loves. She has memories of Prince Philip there and family close by. This move makes sense, the source explained. Experts also believe the move will bring the Queen closer to Prince Andrew, who lives at Row Lodge in Windsor, and Prince Edward, who is settled with his family in Bagshot Park, just a short drive from the castle. But the fate of Buckingham Palace will be entrusted to Prince Charles. More than anyone else, the Prince of Wales understands that this is where the royal family should remain its main headquarters. Although Charles and Camilla simply adore Clarence House, the couple realize that when the time comes to succeed the Queen on the monarch's throne, they will have to move to Buckingham Palace. It's worth noting that this residence was officially declared the main office of the British monarchs when Queen Victoria ascended the throne in 1837. During her reign, the last major additions were made, building another wing and moving the former grand entrance, the Marble Arch, to its present location near Oratory Corner in Hyde Park. In honor of World Book Day, many celebrities, stars and political figures shared their favorite books. Kate Middleton was not left out, and last Thursday she and Camilla Parker Bowles discussed children's literature. In fact, the Duchess of Cambridge hosts her own online show where she reads books and talks about her favorite works. The Duchess of Cornwall is also known to adore books and simply cannot imagine her life without them. The appearance of Kate and Camilla was truly celebratory, because on this day the whole world celebrated the annual literary event, World Book Day. On the occasion of such a celebration, the Duchess of Cambridge shared her top books, which included five recommendations. These works will be interesting for children of preschool and primary school age. By the way, one of these books is a favorite of Kate's daughter Charlotte. For many years Kate Middleton has been studying the system of preschool education, as well as trying to develop methods of teaching young children, because it is very important to instill literacy in children from an early age. Recently, Cambridge appeared on the CBeebies podcast to read Jill Tomlinson's popular tale The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark. It was the work that Kate Middleton included on her list of book favorites for young children. The Duchess also chose the book The Stig of the Dumpster by Clive King. Meghan Markle is not popular among the inner circle of the royal family. The difficult relationship with the Duchess of Sussex was also described by a representative of the British press. Royal photographer Arthur Edwards accompanies members of the royal family on tours for 40 years. However, after Meghan joined Prince Harry's life, he refused to cover any of the couple's tours. In an interview with the I've Got News For You podcast, he explained why he did so. 
According to the photographer, he was uncomfortable being around strangers. Camilla always said hello, Kate said hello, and William, yeah, they're all very friendly, which Harry was until he met Meghan, and then he got very, very aloof and became almost, well, it was terrible, Arthur said. Eventually, as Edwards noted, he stopped going on tours with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, I found it very depressing to be with them. They hated the media, and it was horrible, so I snuck away from them to go with Charles to New Zealand and other places. Two years ago, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle decided to give up royal privilege. The couple also wanted to earn their own money by signing contracts with large companies. However, the couple is in no hurry to fulfill their duties, but only accumulate multi-million dollar debts. In the summer of 2020, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle bought a luxury mansion in Santa Barbara. The former owner of the Russian businessman Sergei Grishin sold them the real estate for 11 million pounds sterling. The location of the facility is very attractive, in the elite district of Montecito live alone celebrities, and the view of the ocean coast. However, Duke and Duchess of Sussex are in no hurry to pay for their luxurious life in the United States. The couple are said to owe 103,995 in unpaid council taxes. Their first payment was due back in December and January. An additional fine has already been imposed for the late payment. However, according to insiders, the couple could have simply not noticed the bills, because it's not that big of a sum for them. Pennies compared to their earnings, the sources believe. Recall that after giving up royal duties and privileges, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle got a job. The grandson of Elizabeth II has taken up career coaching, while his wife has decided to do voiceover work for Disney cartoons. The couple also signed with a number of major companies such as Netflix and Spotify. The last week has been a very difficult one in everyone's life. The whole world is discussing the start of the special operation to protect Donbass, announced by Russian President Vladimir Putin. It is worth noting that Britain and Russia have always had a strained relationship, both politically and economically. Therefore, it is not surprising that many world leaders condemned the start of the special operation in Ukraine, including Czech President Mila Seman and Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Obrin. In addition, most countries did not contribute to resolving the conflict peacefully, but only decided to support Ukraine's military power by supplying weapons and military equipment. Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Japan and South Korea were among the countries that became so-called sponsors of Ukraine. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson wrote on his Twitter that the country took decisive action on February 26. Tonight with our international partners we have decided to exclude Russia from the global financial system SWIFT, including some Russian banks, the Prime Minister said. Prince Charles also decided to comment on the situation, breaking the silence he should keep by the rules of the royal code. Normally members of the royal family remain neutral, but the Welsh could not stay away. On March 1, along with his wife, Camilla Parker Bowles, Prince Charles visited the South End on Sea meeting to celebrate the development of the region of Great Britain, which has now officially become a city. It is worth noting that last year a member of Parliament, David Amos, was killed in a terrorist attack. Welsh said that such a tragedy was a real attack on democracy, open society and freedom itself. Last weekend, Prince George, along with his parents, Kate Middleton and Prince William, attended the Six Nations Rugby Championship match at London's main stadium, Twickenham. Fans were captivated by the appearance of the Cambridge Air, as he so genuinely felt for each of the teams that met on the field. It's worth noting that this event was George's first royal assignment of the year. Previously, we wrote about the Queen's wish for the little prince to start getting into his monarchical job, so it's likely we'll be seeing George in the company of his parents at official events often this year. Most of all, however, Fans noted the resemblance of the heir to Elizabeth II's father, King George VI, after whom, by the way, George was named. The little prince behaved very modestly, and it seems that he was already quite mature and established in this life. He's definitely shy and reserved, but that's not a bad thing. George VI himself was quite shy and stuttered, but over time he turned out to be a great leader and king when his brother abdicated the throne, George VI did everything in spite of being shy and stuttering, noted royal fans. The public is confident that the great-grandson of such a great ruler will not let the royal dynasty down and become one of the best in the Windsor family. It is known that George will succeed his father, Prince William, on the monarch's throne, so it is necessary that the boy already understand the seriousness of his future profession, 
It is worth noting that viewers were also concerned about the question of which team the Little Prince supported after all. George just loves sports and is very gambling, but today two teams, the patrons of which are his parents, met on the field.